Thank you for clicking on. The following is brought to you by a Republican organization, The Lincoln Project. Donald Trump indicted again, this time for violating the Espionage Act, one of the worst crimes imaginable. But he joins a select list of Americans also indicted for this crime. Robert Hansen, Aldrich James, Anna Montez, John Walker, Ronald William Pelton, all indicted for violating the Espionage Act with the prison terms that traitors and spies against America deserve. And what will Trump get? The men and women running against him for president will defend him, praise him, make excuses. They'll lie about the prosecution and make up stories about the deep state to rile up the MAGA base. There's no excuse for espionage. No defense for stealing America's secrets or sharing them with anyone, ever. Trump did this to himself. He took the documents, he shared them, and conspired to cover it up. Patriots know people who commit this crime belong in prison, not the White House. Again, a Republican organization, the Lincoln Project, and uh, they've got one more that they've put out. Let's just uh, let's just go ahead and play that as we start out this broadcast. An indictment was unsealed, yep. charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. So many rats, Donald. They're everywhere. So many people turning on you after all you've done for them. Stabbed you in the back. So many people lying to your face and making deals with Jack Smith. Everyone. Benny Willis, Alvin Bragg. Using you. You made them all so much money. So generous. Made their careers. You gave them their dreams. Now they're after you. They took yours. Cooperating with Jack Smith. They never cared. It's hard to know who to trust. Snitches. They're all watching. You can't trust anyone. Listening. Even your family. Recording you. Everything you say. Spying on you. Everywhere you go. It's bad, Donald. All the time. It's just you. Betraying you. And the rats. Or will jump ship. So many. It's just you. Rats. And them. Once again, from uh, that was from An the indictment. Lincoln Project, Republican Organization. And once again, thank you for clicking on. Let's go to the uh, let's go to the Twitter scroll. Um, sorry about this. Let me hop over to bookmarks real quick, and we shall get rolling along. Um, Jim Trusty, who had uh, left the Trump uh, criminal defense team last week today left the civil lawsuit against uh, CNN asking the judge to be uh, released from the case, citing, quote, irreconcilable differences, end quote, with his client. The next thing we have here is, is something I really think everybody ought to think about. So much so that we're calling the episode where are the lawyers? <laughs> I know what I'm going to do here. There we go. All right. Pardon the interruption, as they say. Let's roll this the right way. The message is worthy. Let's roll it. Okay, let's work from the premise that Donald Trump is completely innocent. Let us begin from the starting point, that Trump is a completely innocent billionaire who is an amazing president, a brilliant businessman, and is being unfairly targeted by an overzealous corrupt justice department. Let's just say all of that is true, which I believe is what some people feel. If that is the case, then where are his lawyers? I don't mean the ex-OAN host supermodel he met at Mar-a-Lago or the ex-Bannon low-level defense lawyer he hired without meeting, both who are now in legal trouble themselves. I mean, where are the top of their class Harvard Law School defense attorneys out of New York or Dallas or Miami or Los Angeles? I mean, this is a high-profile client, a Republican billionaire ex-president. Who wouldn't want to represent him? Especially if you're working from the premise that he is completely innocent and the subject of a gross overstep by the FBI, and there is endless proof that everything he's done is completely justified. Where is the crack legal team? 
Where are the firms charging thousands of dollars an hour? He should have the best legal minds in the country tripping over themselves to represent him. Where is the team put together from the Federalist Society lawyers? Leonard Leo and Donald Trump had a deal. They support him to become president, and they get to pick all of his justices, including the three Supreme Court picks. Being the frontrunner for the Republican nominee for president should give Trump first draft pick of any top-notch conservative lawyer he wants. So where are they? There was a period of time just after the 2020 election when he was represented by a great firm in New York, but they quit before they took his stolen election case to court. That's how we ended up with Jenna Ellis and Rudy Giuliani. No one else would do it. Why not? Who doesn't want to represent the President of the United States? Especially if there's tons of evidence proving his case. Careers are made on such high-profile wins. So where are the conservative Republican bulldog defense attorneys? Where is Trump's Johnny Cochran saying, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit? People represent guilty murderers all the time for profit and high-profile wins. Which lawyer turns away a rich, innocent, high-profile client? It's a legitimate question. Because no matter what you hear on TV or Truth Social or Facebook or from Trump himself about planted evidence and a corrupt FBI or declassified information, ask yourself, then where are the lawyers? Because if everything Trump and his defenders have said is true, then there would be a line around the block to represent him, but no one is there. So next time you go to defend him, ask yourself why no one who would make money from doing the same thing will take the job. Because I think that tells you everything you need to know. Definitely one of those something to think about. Not all the people that have been diehard Trump supporters are uh, absolute imbeciles. Um, some of the thinking people will hear that and have to answer that question. Next up, we have a little more vile. This is from Greenwood, Indiana. The man arrested after four kids say he molested them. Uh, the child victims often spent time playing video games and going on religious youth group hikes at his home. Um, is it any wonder people are leaving churches? Is it any wonder people are, are not having faith with everything that's going on? And uh, why in the world do people vote for Republicans? Um, I really, I, I don't get it. They want in Social Security. They want in Medicare. That's going to impact me. It's going to impact a lot of people I know. I'm not going to be happy about that. Um, and if you think if you think that's that's the answer, um, well, you're going to have some you're going to have some angry people, um, and not not all of us are are necessarily decrepit. Republicans declare running, <laughs> banning universal free school meals. Okay, so it's not enough you want to penalize the older people. You want to make sure the kids don't have enough food. Really, this is the message of the Republican Party? This and Donald Trump, this is what you give to America. Something to think about. Normally, I don't talk about the volcanoes or the earthquakes unless it's something really mega. It kind of is today. Um, it is at, at, at an incredibly high level. Um, we've had a seven, we've had a six, we've had five fives, 54s, 113 threes, and 228 2.0s. Um, earthquake activity all the time on, on our globe. Um, but this is a a high number, and many of them around volcanic, um, volcanic hot spots or potential hot spots. Trump's thrown another one of his former brilliant employees under the bus. This time, it's John Kelly. If you're a Trump supporter, uh, and you're asking yourself, "Okay, where are those? Where are all those high-profile lawyers that should be begging to represent a?" an innocent man, are they all conspiring against him too, along with the rhinos and the, and the Democrats and the bops and the beeps and the bit? Come on now. Ask yourself this. If he's such a good boss and you want him because he's going to treat the, the country like a business and, and make everybody, if he's such a good boss, why does he make such bad hires? 
everybody that he hired, eventually he calls them names and, and belittles them. Um, what do you think he says about you who he doesn't even know? Those people, them, that's what you are. Come on now. And if that's not enough, maybe this will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Caught on tape, the former president not only praising Kim Jong-il, but saying that he wants his people to behave like the North Koreans. Now, this is, this is, this is not, uh, this is not me. This is him. Here we go. Uh, could happen. I mean, we talked about that yesterday. I, would, I, would have, yeah, I think it's something that could happen. Yeah. Hey, he's the head of a country, and I mean, he is the strong head. Don't let anyone think anything different. He speaks, and his people sit up at attention. I want my people to do the same. Well, are we close to that? I'm going to listen to that one more time. Uh, Mr. Kim, here at the White House. Uh, could happen. I mean, we talked about that yesterday. I would, I would have, yeah, I think it's something that could happen. Yeah. Hey. He's the head of a country, and I mean, he is the strong head. Don't let anyone think anything different. He speaks, and his people sit up at attention. I want my people to do the same. Well, are we close? Okay, your people are dwindling, and hopefully dwindling by the episode, as they should be. I'm not saying don't be Republican anymore, if you, you know, if, but Trump, now, come on now. Unfortunately, there will be those that uh, are ride or die that have already cast in their minds that they will do whatever it takes to get Trump back into power. This is what the former chief of staff from the Department of Homeland Security under Donald Trump has to say. Dean his violent supporter. So if I was still in law enforcement at the department... Actually, let's run him back all the way to the beginning. Let's hear the whole thing. We got time. The way I would describe this moment is that Donald Trump has lit the fuse, but the bomb hasn't gone off yet. And I want to take you back into time because we've seen this show before. Now, so-called moderate Republicans told us in the lead up to 2020 that if Donald Trump lost, he would concede and he would transfer power peacefully. I warned a year before that, as you remember, that I said Donald Trump would not concede if he lost, and it would not be peaceful. It would be violent. Now, I was right, and it's not because I'm Nostradamus. It's because I know the man, and I know the violent extremist movement he has fomented, and we're seeing that show on rerun. We had moderate Republicans tell us Trump probably won't run again. If he does, he won't lead the pack. No, they were wrong. He is running for president again. Despite the indictments, he is leading the pack. The more important question from a public safety standpoint is, what will he do if he loses? What will he do if he loses these court cases or if he loses his next bid to the presidency? That's why we haven't seen violence yet, is because Trump and his supporters still think he's in the fight, still think he has a chance to win these cases and win the election. The moment that he loses, like in 2020, Donald Trump will see his last resort being his violent supporter. So if I was still in law enforcement at the Department of Homeland Security, I would be saying... He would be saying, prepare for a, another January 6th level event or higher. Um, it's no wonder. It is no wonder that people are leaving churches and turning their back on faith when this is what faith is offering. Join us for our vacation Bible school on the hunt for Jesus. So if the imagery is, is to be interpreted, we've got two shotguns, we've got a deer, we've got crosshairs, we got a goose, we got two crosses. Uh, they're wanting to, to hunt for Jesus as well as shooting deer and shooting uh, geese. Um, I, I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine being part of a, an organization that would say that they were trying to follow the precepts of Jesus and, and put something like this out. However, the people at Moore's Temple Baptist Church in Hampton, Georgia, 
Uh, I'm sure they are pleased with this, and, and in the United States, they do have the right to do this. Um, in case you're wondering, okay, how could anybody still possibly support Donald Trump? There are, this is, this is an example of one. Um, not all are like this, but sadly, how many are? Something we need to at least ask. Mainstream media is not really providing anything. I mean, Tucker has been good about what he's released recently. You know, uh, what about Joe Biden? Is Joe Biden Joe Biden? No, I, I believe when all is said and done, we'll find out that Joe Biden is actually his twin brother, Bo. Joe Biden is his twin brother, Bo. Yeah, I think Joe's been executed, and what we think of as Joe Biden is actually Bo. Wow. Know, and people are waking up. Well, what would you say to someone who said that none of that makes any sense? I would say, I on, on the surface, I agree with you. Mainstream media is not really providing any. On the surface, I agree with you, too. Um, None of that makes any sense, but nonetheless, this is uh, this is this is the this is the level of support. Um, I want to I want to share a positive thing here. Um, actually, I'm gonna pop it out because I don't want it to stop in the middle. And um, this is a leather back whale, or I'm sorry, a leatherback tortoise, a uh, sea tortoise that has been beached and um, a long, long way from the water. Okay, we got to, sorry, we can't have the copyright strike from the music. Uh, an ingenious plan. They bring in a tractor get a surfboard, a big surfboard, a wide, big body surfboard. Strap the leather back to it. And tow it to the water. Now it's been out of the water a long time. Um, will this be a happy ending? Yes. That's just to remind everybody there are good people in the world. That's just to remind everybody that, that good things do happen. Um, we don't see them enough. We don't talk about them enough. We don't highlight them enough. But good things do go on and good on those people. Um, let me go back here. Our final little clip of the day. This is um, this is Jean Beard from uh, Navstar Observatory in uh, Great Britain, and Jean has been tracking the movement of the magnetic North Pole, um, getting readings every three seconds for uh, for several years now. Uh, he put out this video explaining. Uh, what the magnetic pole shifting uh, means and the impacts it could have. Okay, let's get on with it. For the first time in 780,000 years, our Earth is going through a geomagnetic reversal. This used to occur before 780,000 years, every 300 to 350,000 years. What does this mean? It means that the magnetic North Pole, when you're viewing it on your compass, will read south after the reversal. You can see from 1900 to 1990 that the progression of the magnetic north pole over the northern hemisphere had travelled 500 miles. From 1990 to 2020, it had travelled 1,000 miles. Somewhere in between the outer core and the inner core of the interior of our Earth is a powerhouse called the magneto. The magneto generates the dipoles on our planet, which we call North and South. It also is responsible for generating the Earth's primary protective shield against harmful solar winds.
This is known as the magnetosphere. This is a diagram of the Earth's magnetosphere and all its components. You should note that during a magnetic reversal, the magnetosphere can drastically reduce and therefore allow more solar wind and radiation into our upper atmosphere. Without a magnetosphere, it would be impossible to sustain life on any planet. It is estimated that since the 1900s to the present day, there has been a reduction in the magnetosphere strength or shield by 25%. What this means is it allows uh, the solar wind to blast away the upper atmosphere off the planet because of the weakened protective field. For the last 120 years, the Earth's upper atmosphere has been exposed to more cosmic radiation and solar winds, which has led to an erosion of the upper atmosphere. This in turn uh, has allowed more cosmic rays inbound to our upper atmosphere, which has interfered with jet streams and caused uh, reactions where polar jet streams mix with subtropical jet streams both over the northern and southern hemispheres leading to dramatic climate change. For the first time in 35 years the Earth's magnetosphere has weakened to a point that during solar maximums when the solar winds are at the highest the Earth is now failing to defend itself against these solar winds, which means you are being exposed to 25% more radiation now than you ever have been. 95% of the world's population are completely unaware that the Earth is undergoing a geomagnetic reversal. Here at the Mavstar Observatory, we are committed to informing people of the fact, first of all, that the Earth is going through a magnetic reversal. Okay. I'm going to pause it right here. Um, Gene is the the one of few, if not the only one, that is saying that the magnetic reversal is um, is in the process of happening now. Uh, the reason for this is tomorrow is the day, uh, the 17th of June is the day that Gene has predicted that the... Uh, the poles, both the, the magnetic North Pole, which is migrating, as we've just seen, and the mag magnetic South Pole, which is also migrating, um, that they will begin a rapid flip tomorrow uh, when the North Pole crosses the 40 degree mark and enters a weakened magnetic zone um, from from 40 degrees north to 40 degrees south, the magnetism on Earth is is not near as intense as it is from 40 degrees to the poles. Uh, so, um, again, he's but you know every disaster movie you see, there's one scientist that figures it out when nobody else does, and everybody discredits him and and defunds him, and then they come to him when it happens and goes, okay, now what do we do? So uh, just in case that is the situation, um, no matter how much more radiation is coming in, there is more radiation coming in. So be wary if you're going to be out in the sun for extended periods of time um, because there's just more radiation in our atmosphere, and uh, there's really nothing we can do about it. We can argue about whether climate change is caused by CO2 or if it just happens because of uh, the magnetic sphere. Um, those points are really mute because climate change is happening and, and we are witnesses to it. Uh, it's just a matter of how severe it gets and uh, how quickly it comes upon us. And hopefully it is a gradual process as, as many things are here on Earth. So I'm going to close it out one final time. I'm going to replay, um, close it out the way we started and um, start out, do it in reverse order. Uh, this again is from a Republican organization called the Lincoln Project. And this particular one minute ad is called Rats. An indictment was unsealed, charging Donald J. Trump with felony violations 
of our national security laws, as well as participating in a conspiracy to obstruct justice. So many rats, Donald. They're everywhere. So many people turning on you after all you've done for them. Stabbed you in the back. So many people lying to your face and making deals with Jack Smith. Everyone. Benny Willis, Alvin Bragg. Using you. You made them all so much money. So generous. Made their careers. You gave them their dreams. Now they're after you. They took yours. Cooperating with Jack Smith. They never cared. It's hard to know who to trust. Snitches. They're all watching. You can't trust anyone. Listening. Even Recording you. Everything you say. Spying on you. Everywhere you go. It's bad, Donald. All the time. It's just you. Betraying you. And the rats. Horrible Joe ship. So many. It's just you. Rats. Again, the Lincoln Project responsible for that and content. And uh, this one we will finish on. Once again, from the Lincoln Project. This one is uh, this one is titled "Espionage." Spying. Donald Trump indicted again. This time for violating the Espionage Act, one of the worst crimes imaginable. But he joins a select list of Americans also indicted for this crime: Robert Hansen, Aldrich James, Anna Montez, John Walker, Ronald William Pelton, all indicted for violating the Espionage Act with the prison terms that traitors and spies against America deserve. And what will Trump get? The men and women running against him for president will defend him, praise him, make excuses. They'll lie about the prosecution and make up stories about the deep state to rile up the MAGA base. There's no excuse for espionage. No defense for stealing America's secrets or sharing them with anyone, ever. Trump did this to himself. He took the documents, he shared them, and conspired to cover it up. Patriots know people who commit this crime belong in prison, not the White House. If the guy's innocent, where are the lawyers lining up to represent him? We'll see you next time.